The Giants punched their ticket. The Giants destroyed the Colts. And I regret on the joint Chris Sims Unbuttoned PFTPM Picks podcast last week, I gave Sims a chance to put his hand back on the checker. He had already picked the Colts to cover. And I made the case of why I thought the Giants were going to kill the Colts. And in some crazy-ass act of holiday season charity, I said to Chris, I'll let you, because I persuaded him. I said, I'll let you go Uh, back and change your pick to the Giants covering the spread. And he did. So uh, I'm a dumbass. I let him do it. And the Giants win 38-10. to um, And the Giants are to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Brian Dayball, great performance taking a roster that was overmatched. Joe Shane as well, coming in and making just the right additions with those two top 10 picks they had, shoring up the offensive line and shoring up the pass rush. And it's 38 to 10. The Giants peaking at the right time. The Colts in the toilet. And the Giants will be the sixth seed. And they may get a chance to go back to Minnesota and get a little redemption for that Christmas Eve a 61-yard field goal game that it felt like they should have won, could have won, and would have won, but ultimately didn't win. Yeah, I mean, I think Brian Dayball's done a really, really good job with that team. I mean, getting the most out of Daniel Jones, Mike Kafka now might be a pretty good head coaching candidate for some different teams just based on what he's been able to do with that offense, not just with Jones, but also reviving um, the career of Saquon Barkley, right? But I mean, when Daniel Jones is running for nearly 100 yards in that game, my gosh, like, what does that say about the Colts, man? You get Brian Dayball with the little Gatorade shower. That was pretty cool, too. But the, the Colts are terrible, and you've got a, a good, motivated team with the Giants that I don't know if they're really going to make a deep run in the postseason, but I, I don't see why they can't go to Minnesota and make it a really competitive game and perhaps come away with a win there. I mean, just based on what Minnesota's been putting out there, you know, they got a negative 19 point differential with your Minnesota Vikings. The Giants could go in there and win. Well, look, the Giants' biggest weakness is the receiver position. Well, the Vikings' biggest weakness is covering receivers. And on that Christmas Eve game from nine days ago, they, they, they made the Giants' receivers look like Jerry Rice and, and John Taylor in their prime. Uh, so I think the Giants will, will be, and then again, it, this is the whole psychology of being the team that's the road team, the team that's supposed to lose. How the Giants may be favored in that game. The Vikings may be a home underdog in, in, in the playoffs. I don't know about I, they're that. They're a one-point favorite. Listen, listen to me. They're a one-point favorite at Chicago. The Bears are 3-13. and 13. The Vikings are 12-4. and Four, and the Vikings are a one-point favorite at Soldier Field on Sunday. And as, as ridiculous as that sounds, I'll probably pick the Bears to win that game when the time comes later well, this week. Uh, here's Saquon I mean, the, Barkley. Due to, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the, the I was going to throw to the, the sound, I'll let you say something. Thank you very much. But the, the Vikings are, you know, they, they're locked into a home playoff game. They're not going to get home field advantage. So, I mean, that's kind of the issue there i mean the bears they still want to do enough to you know make things look good for justin fields going into the offseason but anyway here's saquon barkley uh talking about that win yesterday i feel like i've been saying it all year uh he's a heck of a player heck of a quarterback Uh, i think it really showed not just today but the whole season and i'm just happy for him you know hearing that hear his name get chanted um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, and pe- you can finally see he's starting to get the respect that he earns. Um, I know everyone you know, want to be a big critic of him and say this and say that, but uh, he gave us the opportunity to play playoff football, and he locked it in today. Um, when we need him most, he lo- when we need him most, he came up and made big plays. You guys don't see this, but you know, you know, I get here pretty early, um, and, but every single time I get here, I get here pretty early. There's there's a car that's going to be there before me. And it's Daniel Jones. Like he's the first one in, last one to leave. Like he really lives that, like that mentality. Like he has that mentality, and he's tough. Um, he's a heck of a player, a heck of a guy, a heck of a teammate. And um, you know, he's our he's he's our captain, he's our leader. And when you have that guy at the quarterback position, um, you believe you can win any game. 
they will glass half full this as much as they can, but the reality is they surely regret not picking up the fifth year option on Daniel Jones. But they would say yeah. the fact that we didn't pick up the fifth year option was one of the reasons why he went out and had such a great season. Well, okay, if that's the case, then why would you sign him to a new contract if you think, you know, without the motivation, he's not going to be as good? I mean, you get <laughs> twisted up in knots pretty quickly if you try to justify the decision not to pick up the fifth year option. The bottom line is they may have to use the franchise tag on him. And they got both Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones heading toward free agency. You're going to have to sign one so you can use the franchise tag on the other if you're inclined to do so. Good problems to have. Good problems to have. The only good problems are no problems, but it is a problem, good or otherwise, for the Giants to have two of your most important players heading toward free agency and going to the playoffs and playing in January as other teams who are making their list of who they're going to pursue in free agency can sit back and watch Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and maybe fall in love with either or both guy. But Jones getting it done. Barkley getting it done, although yesterday only had 58 rushing yards. They didn't need a big day from him. That's how good the Giants have gotten. You do, you know, early on it was like, okay, well, if Saquon Barkley can come out and play like he did as a rookie when he had 2,000 yards from scrimmage, maybe the Giants can be decent. When you get to the point where you don't have to have a big day from Barkley, but you still kick the crap out of a team, and I know it was just the Colts, but they're still an NFL team. You're, look, any given Sunday still applies, or Monday or Thursday or Saturday, whenever they play games. It still applies. An NFL team can always beat another NFL team. To kick the crap out of the Colts without Saquon Barkley having a big day just shows you how good this Giants team has become under Brian Dayball, Miles. Yeah, good good teams keep bad teams losing, right? That That's what good teams are supposed to do. You can beat a team in different ways if you're a good team and kick the crap out of them as – um, the Giants did yesterday if you know what your plan is and you understand the way the team is going to try to defend you and you have things to counter that that's what I mean by Mike Kafka and the job that he's doing as the offensive play caller they understood that the that the Colts would probably try to take Saquon Barkley away that they have a decent run defense I mean that, that's something that you know for all the Colts faults the defense hasn't been that awful all season long right but when you have a good counter to that and you have Daniel Jones running ability, then that's where you can say, yeah, we know how we can beat this team, and that's how we're going to implement it. So, yeah, credit goes to them for doing what they needed to do. And, you know, I mentioned how the Giants will have to glass have full their decision not to pick up the franchise tag or, or the fifth-year option, excuse me, on Daniel Jones. Uh <laughs> It's going to be harder and harder for Jim Irsay to glass half full Jeff Saturday's performance as interim coach oh, to make God. him the permanent coach. There's been this sense that Irsay is going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. It's getting harder and harder to make the case to anyone that Jeff Saturday should be the permanent head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.